Hello everyone, today inshallah we are going to talk about Unit 2, Chapter 3, Force and Motion In this chapter we are going to talk about Newton's Law of Motion The first law we are going to talk about today known as Newton's First Law of Motion In the beginning we are going to talk about the reason for motion what is the relation between force and motion? Without force, there is no motion. So, the force is considered the cause of motion or the reason for motion. Objects around us move due to the effect of force acting on the object. And objects around us stops due to the effect of a force on it. So, we can define force it is an external influence that affects the object to change its state or direction of motion. We have here many examples for forces that exist around us, such as the force exerted by your muscles helps to pull or push things, or the force, magnetic force, or friction force or gravitational force. We have many types of forces that exist around us. Some of them can be seen and other cannot be seen like the gravity or the magnetic force. The measuring unit of force is known as Newton, related to the scientist Isaac Newton. And the measuring device used to measure the force is known as the spring scale. We have here an image for the spring scale which is used to measure the force in Newton. In this part we are going to talk about Newton's first law of motion. If we have a static object like this ball, the static object or the ball keeps its state of rest unless acted upon by a resultant force, unless a player comes and kick the ball, or the air affects the ball to change its state. So, a static object keeps its state of rest, unless acted upon by a resultant force. And, a moving object keeps its state of motion at uniform velocity in a straight line. If this ball moves, and no force acting on it, it will keep moving in a straight line with uniform velocity. Unless a force acting on it to change its state to stop it, like this net here, or the friction between the ball and the air, or the friction between the ball and the ground. So, according to Newton's first law, the statement of this law, a static object keeps its state of rest and moving object keeps its state of motion at uniform velocity in a straight line unless acted upon by a resultant force. Again, any static object keeps its state of rest. Again, any static object it will keep its state of rest and any moving object it will keep its state of motion at uniform velocity in a straight line unless acted upon by a resultant force unless a force acting on it to change its state, its state of motion or its state of rest. The mathematical formula for Newton's first law of motion, sigma f equals zero, which means the total forces affecting an object equals zero. The object can be affected by more than one force and these forces cancel the effect of the of the other. So the total forces affecting on an object or the resultant force affecting an object equals zero. Here this letter this letter pronounced sigma, which means the resultant or the total. According to the Newton first law, the total forces affecting an object equals zero. The object can be acted upon by more than one force, 
but these forces cancel the effect of each other. Therefore, the object keeps its state of rest or its state of motion with uniform velocity in a straight line. In this case, the acceleration equals zero, which means the object, if the object at rest, the acceleration equals zero because the object velocity equals zero. And if the object moves with uniform velocity, there is no change in the object velocity. Therefore, the acceleration also equals zero. So, no change happens to the state of the object. Here we have an example. If this object, this body at rest, its velocity equals zero, so its acceleration equals zero, and many forces affecting the object, like a force from the left side and the other force from the right side, these two forces equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, each one of them equal 30 Newton, therefore no change occur to the state and the object keeps its state of rest. Why? Because the two forces equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, so they will cancel the effect of each other. Here we have another example. If we have an object moving with uniform velocity in a state of motion, but it moves with uniform velocity, 20 meter per second, and two forces affecting the object, one of them 30 newton from the left and the other one 30 newton from the right. In this case, the two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, so they will cancel the effect of each other also, and the object keeps motion, keeps its motion with uniform velocity. Here we have many examples for external forces that may cause the change in the object velocity, or uh, they may affect the object like air resistance and friction force. The conclusion from the previous part, we must remember that force equal mass times acceleration, F equal ma. According to the Newton first law, the total forces affecting an object equal zero, sigma F equal zero. Therefore, the acceleration equal zero. No change occur to the object state. And the acceleration equals zero in two cases, if the object exists at rest and the object velocity in this case equals zero, so we can represent the state of the object graphically by using this graph between distance and time by straight line parallel to the time axis. The graph represents Newton's first law. Why? Because the object at rest and there is no acceleration. And the second way we can represent the Newton first law, if the object moves with uniform velocity. If the object moves with uniform velocity, we have two graphs representing the motion of the object. The first graph between distance time graph, this graph represented by straight line parallel passing through the origin point, and the other way by velocity time graph, this graph represented by straight line parallel to the time axis. Now we have an application on the Newton's first law. If we have an object in a state of rest, its velocity equals zero, and a force of 10 Newton acting on the object from the left side, and other force affecting an object from the right side at the same line of action. In this case, the sum of the forces acting on the object equals zero. So Sigma F equals zero. The resultant force equals zero. So F1 plus F2 must equal zero according to the Newton's first law. So the first force equal 10 Newton and the other force F2 equal negative 10 Newton. Why? Because it acts in opposite direction to the first force. So the total forces affecting an object will cancel each other, the two forces cancel the effect of each other, and the total forces in this case equal zero. The resultant force equal zero. Now we are going to talk about very important concept related to Newton's first law, it's known as inertia. Newton's first law is known as the law of inertia. Why? Again, 
Why Newton's first law, known as the law of inertia, because the object cannot change its state by itself. Here in this figure, we have this graph which is driving a car. When it hit the wall, the graph moves forward. Why? Due to the inertia. To clarify the concept of inertia, we are going to define inertia. It is the ten tendency of an object to keep either its state of rest or its state of motion in straight line with uniform velocity. Or we can define inertia, it is the property of the object to resist the change of its static or dynamic state. Again, the concept of inertia means the object try to keep its state, whatever its state, its state of rest, if the object exists in a state of rest, it tries to keep its state of rest and stay in its place. If the object in a state of motion, the object tries to keep moving with uniform velocity in a straight line. Here we have the concept of inertia in the figure of the graph. The graph exists inside the car and the car moves with uniform velocity. When the car hit the ground, hit the wall, when the car hit the wall, the graph rushed forward due to inertia. Why? Because her body tried to keep its state of motion. Here we have many examples for inertia and application for inertia. If a car starts to move, the passengers suddenly, if a car starts to move suddenly, passengers inside the car tend to fall backward due to inertia. Their bodies try to keep its state of rest due to inertia. So they rush backward. They try to return to the original position. Here we have another example. If a car stops suddenly, passengers inside the car tend to fall backward. Here we have this video. If the passenger inside a moving car hit a wall by his car, his body rushes forward due to inertia because his body tries to keep its state of motion due to inertia. So seat belts should be fastened on driving. Why? To protect the driver from being hurt, passengers from being hurt due to inertia and protect their bodies from damage of inertia, causes by inertia. Here we have the reason seat belt should be fastened on driving to stop inertia during sudden stop and protect passengers from being hurt. Now we are going to talk about another applications on inertia. Falling of a coin into a cup when the card is removed rapidly. Here, the coin falls inside the cup when the card is removed suddenly and rapidly. The coin tries to keep its state of rest. Yes, rest due to inertia. Here we have another similar example. Here, when we remove this piece of carton suddenly, the ball falls inside, inside the cups. Why? Due to inertia. This move, similar to the move that the magician do inside surface. Here we have another example. The continuity of the fan arm after the electric current is cut off due to inertia. The continuity of a fan motion for a period of time when the electric current is turned off. Why? Because it tries to keep its state of motion due to inertia. This is the end of this part. See you soon, inshallah, in the last part. The Newton third law and good luck.